good afternoon everyone so so first i thank this uh, icqmd uh, organizing committee for giving me opportunity to present our recent uh, publication uh, in this uh, nice conference so i am phd candidate and i am working under professor ps anil kumar in department of physics uh, indian institute of science bangalore india so the title of my topic is uh, talk is that momentum space and real space very curvature induced hall effect in magnetic polysymmetric u2 i2 O seven, one one on epitaxial thin film. So okay. So uh, the uh, the compound is belongs to the pyrochloridates family. Like a, a side you can put any kind of rare earth element, uh, and, and the B side is five uh, D element iridium and uh, oxygen. So if you see the phase diagram, uh, like uh, in plane of electronic correlation U and spin orbit coupling lambda. So uh, there is depending on the relative strength of u and lambda there are multiple uh, el electronic ground state so if you consider five 3d element where electronic correlation is high whereas uh, due to uh, small atomic number means small z value the lambda value will be low so you will uh, go towards the more insulating side but iridium is 5d element why we have uh, extended orbital that's why the electronic correlation will be low as well as high z value that's why the spin orbit coupling will be high so uh, and their relative value will uh, their value will be relatively close to each other so we will landed near to the semi metallic phase like uh, this oil semi metallic phase that is predicted by theoretically now if you consider the variation uh, now if you cons if you vary the a side a side cation radius so like if you go to as we go to higher atomic radii so what will happen the sample will become more metallic like uh, this particular series have metal to magnetic insulated transition temperature like uh, thermally driven transition but if we uh, increase the ionic radius what will happen the sample will become more metallic metallic and in the lower ionic radius the higher temperature region will be non metallic whereas the low temperature will be magnetic insulator so uh, since we are trying to probe the oil semi metal uh, nature so our most interest will be near to this like this eu sm and nd where we can see this metallic behavior at high temperature and insulating behavior in the low temperature and not insulating it will be like semi metallic behavior as we process we, we can like explain the how does it is defined that insulating behavior okay so this is uh, electronic phase diagram in space of uh, u and lambda now people have theoretically calculated the band structure and so it will have some 3d crossing point inside the band inside the electronic band uh, and this crossing is called while node it is uh, different the Dirac node where the spin or uh, like spin degeneracy is not broken but for this particular case the spin degeneracy will be broken and if we get the projection of this builder zone in the Fermi surface we'll get uh, like Fermi are kind of density of state so it is called Fermi uh, in the surface of the billiard zone okay so this all about our electronic structure of this material now if we consider the spin structure of this material like if you look along the body diagonal of the unit cell we'll have this corner sharing tetrahedra so there is two cation like one cation uh, will be displaced from each other like half of the unit cell and if we start putting the magnetic moment on the cation due to the geometrical structure the magnetic moment will be either parallel to the local one one axis or uh, um, anti parallel to the local 1 1 axis. So basically, we will have two kind of domain structure. Like in, in this domain, the, all the spin are towards the center of the tetrahedra, and the bottom tetrahedra, all the spin are away from the center of the tetrahedra. So we call this as a all in, all out, whereas this domain we call as a B, B domain, all out, all in. And at zero field, both are equally probable. So sample will have uh, like equal distribution of the both the domain. So this is all about the magnetic structure of this material. Okay, so now we, uh, as we process our measurement, will try to probe both the electronic structure as well as the magnetic structure of the sample through the uh, man, through the help of magnetic transfer measurement. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have uh, studied the sample in thin film geometry. So the substrate we have used YSZ11 substrates as the lattice parameter of the sam sample and substrate is close to each other, like double of the lattice parameter of substrate and uh, lattice parameter of the sample is close to each other and if we calculate the lattice mismatch it will come 0.3 percent so since the for thin film the surface of the substrate is very much important that's why we did the treatment of the substrate also like this is the 
AFM image of the as receives means commercially bird substrate. So you can see a lot of island kind of feature and rough surface. So if we do heat treatment like annealing at 1200 degrees centigrade for two hours in air, we'll get nice stress stress structure. So this is the corresponding AFM image. So it have step with a 0.3 nanometer, which is kind of spacing along the D11 direction and with some over 100 nanometers. So the miscut angle will come around 0.15 degree. Now we'll go to the our uh, sample preparation. So uh, the ta since uh, we the uh, since iridium have a lot of tendency to have uh, going out of the sample, like d due to the formation of IRO3, which is volatile in nature. What we used, we used three to one target instead of stoichiometric target, and we evaluated the stagger material, and uh, and this our sample preparation is kind of two step process. Like since uh, this pyrochlorophase from very high temperature. So if we grow the sample at high temperature in the PLD process, we will not be able to stabilize the phase. That's why we, uh, we, uh, what we did, we annealed the sample in the some higher temperature where uh, the phase is forming. And this is the corresponding the uh, structural analysis. So first figure which is the XRR, which confirm the thickness. Then this is the XRD figure. So the presence of the odd peak confirm the pure phase of pyrochloro uh, rather than any impurity phase. And to check the strain or relaxed growth, we have done reciprocal space mapping. So this is the, uh, the this, uh, this reciprocal space mapping tell us it has strain growth and its cubic symmetry is broken in the sample. So which will help us to explain other result. Uh, okay. Now, now this is the oxidation state we have uh, check the oxidation of the, both the cation like U3 plus and IR4 plus. So we saw that the IR4 plus is not, uh, sorry, uh, iridium don't have only one single oxidation state, rather it have two oxidation state, 4 plus and 3 plus. And we assign that it will be, might be due to some oxygen of stoichiometry in the sample, whether you have only one oxidation state. Now we measure the resistivity versus temperature. So in the high field, uh, sorry, high temperature region, it have uh, metallic behavior, whereas there around 90 Kelvin, it have going to the uh, insulating behavior, but the insulating does not follow any activation law, rather it follows some power law, T to the minus alpha. That means uh, it is kind of gapless semi metallic feature. Now this transition is related to the some microscopic uh, change in the IROC's octet uh, parameter like IRO ox uh, oxygen bond or IRO oxygen length that is changing with the uh, temperature variation that's why it is reflected in the transport. Now, now when we are uh, studying the sample, we, uh, we already uh, had some knowledge about the how to tune the same metallic charge transfer. So people have done the ch uh, variation in the charge transfer by applying physical pressure, like the report by Tapti Dowell in 2012, what they did, they, they, uh, they started applying hydro, hydrostatic pressure in the single crystal, and if, if you saw, as we increasing the pressure, their resistivity value is dropping, that is, it is becoming more metallic, metallic, metallic. That means there is change in the lattice parameters occurring, that's why hopping is uh, changing, that's why they are getting more metallic. Similarly, in the paper by Isika et al., what they did instead of hydrostatic pressure, they changed the stoichiometry in the sample. And if you see, the, as we increase the iridium uh, content in the sample, the metallic nature is also increasing. So this is kind of physical pressure, this can be called chemical pressure. So we, our idea was that whether we can tune the, uh, uh, the same metallic charge transfer by in thin film geometry. So what we did, we grow through different thickness sample, like this is 30 nanometer, 50 and 70. We saw that the XID peak is shifting towards the left. That means lattice parameter is increasing as we're going to lower thickness sample. So lattice parameter can change due to two reasons. Either it can have systematic change in the strain or systematic change in the lat uh, what to call, uh, lattice parameter. So what we did, we, did, we took help of the reciprocal space mapping, and we see that all the sample have similar strain. Like all the sample of similar lattice parameter in plane, whereas the whatever change is occurring, that is occurring in the out of plane. That means strain is not playing role, only the stoichiometry is play, playing role here. That's why its uh, uh, peak position is shifting towards lower value. That means lattice parameter is increasing. Now, if you see the transport properties, so the red curve is the transport for uh, like 
resist normalized resistivity versus temperature blood that is about 30 nanometer. So in 30 nanometer we are not seeing any metallic behavior in the high temperature other than it is started increasing from the 300 Kelvin and going up to 2 Kelvin. So we are missing the metal insulator transition for 30 nanometer rather if you see the 15, 17 nanometer the we can see nice metallic behavior at the high temperature region and nice change in the slope at around 100 Kelvin. So we, uh, this is the derivative plot to, uh, ca to capture the transition temperature to help of the slope of the high high temperature derivative and low temperature derivative and you can see the systematically change in the transition temperature is occurring. Now we, uh, we fitted the low temperature data like 2 to 25 Kelvin in the some power law form like ln rho versus ln t and we fitted with nice straight line. So if, if we put the coefficient alpha versus thickness we can see it is decreasing as we increasing the thickness that means it's resistance is decreasing as we increasing the thickness. So this is also playing similarly as a chemical pressure in the sample. Okay. So basically we can tune the metallic behavior in the sample by changing its thickness. So yeah, so now we, fo so we focus on the 15, around 60 nanometer sample and did all the transfer properties in the details transfer properties measurement. So this, this is our, um, Hall data at 4 Kelvin, just measure Hall data, rho XY versus field, magnetic field. So you could measure up to uh, 90, uh, 9 Tesla. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So after subtracting the ordinary part, ordinary Hall component, we can see the presence of extra component. So we term this as an anomalous plus topological component. So similarly, we, may, we plot the data for different different temperature from, and the extra components start appearing from 25 Kelvin onward. So if we see it is coming and it increasing the value, but at 10 Kelvin it is kind of smooth variation and getting saturation, but the low temperature like 3 Kelvin onward, it have some harm kind feature then saturation and it is more prominent at 2 Kelvin. So this might be coming due to the some uh, extra component rather than top, uh, anomalous hull component. So what we did, uh, yeah, so actually this for magnetic material, this anomalous hull component can come from magnetization also, but uh, in our case, since it's an antiferromagnet and its magnetization is very low, only the field induced magnetization is occurring. So to rule out the magnetization origin, we have plotted the anomalous hull resistivity like this blue curve along with the major magnetization at the red curve. So you could see that there is there is no one-to-one -one correlation. So the magnetization origin is not the only origin, rather than some extra uh, origin is coming, which we, which uh, we assign that momentum says very curvature rather than the magnetization origin. So this uh, this our anomalous hull measurements uh, uh, confirm that there might be some uh, linear crossing point inside the Bilirubin, which is acting as a fictitious magnetic field, and we are getting extra component in the anomalous hull component, uh, anomalous hull resistivity. Okay, so to, uh, there is now standard rule to kind of see the mechanism of the anomalous hull conductivity, like the scaling relation, rho xy saturation versus rho xx. So we have plotted the saturation resistivity versus rho xx at zero field, and it, you can see that it is following some lin, uh, uh, power law, like rho xx to the 1.6. That means the intrinsic origin is depressed by uh, the suppress, suppressed by the presence of disorder in the material, but uh, yeah, and yeah, this is a, a color plot of the rho xy, H plus th and HT plane, like field versus temperature. So in the, you can see in the low temperature and high field region, the anomalous hull resistivity is high, but here we can see the little drop. That means that the th signal is dropping in the this region, that's why it is coming little drop. So it, the phase space we divided in two parts. So the low temperature, high part, we mention at a WSM, WSM is while semi metal, whereas the high temperature region, we mention that all in all out semi metal, because the magnetic order is present, but the uh, while nature is not uh, presenting here, that's why we call this a all in all out semi metal. Yeah, so this confirm as a fingerprint, uh, this, I, this, this anomalous hall resistivity measurement is uh, confirm the, uh, means, uh, give some identification or uh, how to call it? this sub feelings of the presence of oil uh, point in the material that means it confirm the fingerprint of oil symmetric phase in this 
particular compound. So we have measured some other sample also. So this interesting thing, in addition to non-linearity, we are getting some hysteresis also, like in the low temperature. For one sample, we got 3 to 2 Kelvin. Other sample, we got almost 7 Kelvin, the hysteresis. Whereas there is no hysteresis in the magnetization. So that is solely governed by this uh, momentum stress very curvature. Now we'll, uh, in, now our interest will be the real space very curvature, like topological Hall effect. So what we did uh, to extract the topological Hall component, we have fitted the 10 Kelvin Hall data where only the anomalous Hall component is present. And we, this red, car, uh, red curve is a fitted curve with some exp uh, empirical formula, like odd polynomial. So we just use the odd polynomial and scale it out to capture the smooth variation of this 2K data. And we, after, so we subtracted the black curve from the red curve and we got this THE component. So this THG component, we can see it is varying, means it is increasing the low field region and getting saturated around 50 kilohertz then dropping in high field region. So this non-monotonic variation, we can explain with the simple uh, models. So since uh, our material have non copular spin structure, so if we see three spin, uh, like three neighbor spin, SI, SJ, SK, which is close some like triangle and some conduction electron towards this path like SI, SJ, SK, it will acquire some extra very phase which will be proportional to the solid angle of the uh, three spin. So SI dot SJ cross SK is called uh, scalar spin chirality. So at the zero field, we have both kind of domain. So and th their corresponding spin chirality will be equal and opposite, so it will cancel out. That is mentioned here, like with the simple model. But as we increase in the field, so there will be asymmetric canting. That's why you have non-zero spin chirality in particular direction, uh, and that's why it is will increase and it gets saturation. And what will happen when you apply large field? Their angle will try to close. That's why uh, the solid angle will drop. That's why you are getting decreasing in nature. So, this, so what we mean real space very curvature is that this, since the spin structure is in the real lattice, so we call this, uh, the spin chirality into real space very curvature causes our large H, uh, TH. Now we'll go to our uh, magneto resistance measurement. So, uh, for our sample, we have applied the field along the one one direction and magnetic lattice have the one one direction. So, this blue, uh, green curve is the zero field measurement, like we just cool down the sample up to 2 Kelvin, then we apply field and did the measurement. So if you see the two uh, green curve, it is symmetric in the both positive half and negative half. Whereas the red curve, what we did, we apply 14 Tesla field at room temperature uh, or above the magnetic ordering temperature and we cool the sample. So we can see nice asymmetric in the positive half and negative half. Whereas in the negative, uh, sorry, bl blue curve, we apply minus 14 Tesla field and cool the sample, so we can see the asymmetries reverse the sign. So here we plotted the asymmetric component, like uh, red versus green, and uh, this green curve shows that there is no asymmetry, asymmetry is zero, but red and blue curve shows the asymmetry is reversing sign when you're changing the field direction. So it means that we are able to stabilize one kind of domain in the material by field cooling, uh, by instead of zero field cool, if we cool down in, in some positive field, it will stabilize one domain, and if we pull down in negative field, it will stabilize other domain. So this measurement confirms that the bistability of the single domain in the material. Okay, so now if we uh, go to details of the, this earlier measurement was just two Kelvin only. Now if we go to details measurement at different different temperature, what will happen? At two Kel uh, from two Kelvin to ten Kelvin, MR is negative and symmetric in both direction and there is no hysteresis. But uh, interesting, the low temperature, uh, sorry, low field region, the MR is more or less behaving uh, quadratically, whereas high field region, it is linear, which is captured nicely in the derivative plot. Now, if we go to intermediate temperature, like height 15 to like transition temperature, what will happen? In the low field region, there is positive MR, and high field, it is negative MR, and there is nice hysteresis between the two field sweep, like up sweep and down sweep. So we explain this half sweep uh, and down sweep in, in terms of field induced how to call change in the spin structure. So the first uh, we took the help of this simple model like H H is the Hamiltonian for the spin, whereas this SI dot SJ is the 
uh, antiferromagnetic exchange interaction between the two spin and this uh, second term is the due to fill into Zeeman energy. So what will happen when there is some temperature, this term will have a weak contribution rather than this uh, fill into Zeeman energy will have large contribution. So some spin will flip and make some other uh, uh, magnetic structure. So we and there will be like imbalance of the domain, like both A and B domain. So positive field region, the A domain will be maximized, whereas negative field region, B domain will be maximized. So that is gives us a finite hysteresis between uh, field uh, uh, so upsweep and dive sweep. Now this, uh, and this hysteresis is present, yeah. And this hysteresis is present up to 80 Kelvin, where is the transition temperature. So it confirms, sorry. So it confirms that there is subtle interplay between the antiferromagnetic exchange and Zeeman energy and the spin as well as the <coughs> domain structure is plays significant role in the magneto transfer properties. So to, to summarize our result that we can tune the charge transfers by varying the thickness of the sample and this anomalous Hall effect is governed by the momentum space very curvature and this topological Hall effect is mediated by the real space uh, uh, very curvature due to the non coplanar spin structure. And this magnetic field induced modification of the spin structure is uh, change the spin structure as well as domain distribution, which which causes us asymmetric and hysteristic magneto resistance. Okay, so so I acknowledge the, all the funding agencies and my collaborator like Dr. D. Samuel and Dr. Swetha Bhatt and Dr. Anand Pal. And finally, I thanks for the uh, your attention. Actually, here what is happening? Uh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, the thing is that the sample have lot of sensitivity of the iridium IR. Like if you go to the earlier report, if you see that there is iridium content is changing from one percent to three percent, and the resistivity dropping from ten to the four to one. Uh, so, since our sample of thin film and we are growing at high temperature like 1000 degree, so when our thickness smaller, so more iridium will have tendency to grow out of the sample because uh, iridium will become IRO3 in the presence of oxygen and it have tendency to go out of the sample but when we make some thick sample, more iridium will be contained in the sample. That's why this uh, iridium content will be uh, like balanced when we grow out the thick, thick sample. Uh, I think the composition will change a lot when we grow the light, lot thickness. That's why we will not be able to conclude whether this is dimensional dependent or. Yeah, yeah. Her magneto resistance trend and behavior will be similar, but absolute value can decrease and increase. So because this IR, uh, dom uh, how to call this, spin will be like when you are have impurity sample, so their network will be dis disjoint or kind of, so value can decrease also and increase also. So that is little bit like a kind of very much toxicity sensitive this compound particularly. Like even people have done this single crystal study also, they are not able to get this particle. Like here they are getting nice transition, but if you see this study, they are not getting nice transition. <laughs>